Hey guys, this is Dardamos with Dardamos Dominions. Let's get into turn two. So last time we got our research set and we completed alt one. We're hoping to get alt two before our recruited uh, Dione comes online. So we are looking at where we're going to expand next. And with Yomi starting army, he's he's a good he's a good mage and he's a good kind of a good super combatant he can kind of solo ish with a little bit of gear he could probably solo some provinces however he's not there yet and it's kind of a risk now the troops that he's going with these guys are trash and this is where i'm going to make one of my starting mistakes i'm going to bring this guy in and, and at the beginning of the turn he was here I throw him in here, which is a huge mistake because he's going to fly across the map at combat speed 17, and these guys are going to fly across the speed or across the map at uh, at, at combat speed 10. So in one turn, this guy's going to be seven squares ahead, which is about the, these lines. I think are about 10. Um, so he's going to be flying way ahead. He's just going to get himself murderized. And he's a he's a big guy, so he's kind of important. Like they, they're you don't get very many of these, and it's not the end of the world if I lose him. But it, it's a waste of about I want to say like for me the 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 size the size five guys are worth about eight gold. The size two guys are worth about ten gold, and these guys are worth about fifteen gold. So it's, I'm losing about fifteen gold worth of troops by doing this, which is a waste, especially since Yomi. I mean, if you see my income, my income is absolute trash. I am watch. I am uh, watching this in a, in a later patch, so I'm kind of a little worried about the replays. So if there's any replay glitchiness, it's because there was a recent patch, which you guys are probably playing on at this point. So we're gonna go. Um, I, I look at these guys, um, and let's go over the 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 yes and nos of this situation. Um, so. This guy right here is negative because we have war elephants. These guys are, um, I think they're deer tribe, and then these guys are lion tribe, and then these guys are going to be our um, like heavy infantry and archers. I, th I think we can take on the deer tribe. The lion tribe might be a little bit damaging, and the uh, the heavy infantry and archers are going to be where we're going to get the most reward. If you see, we get like 50 gold, 15 gold, and 160 gold. So I'm going to take this out while I still can. Um, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to put ourselves into this formation right here. Now, this guy comes with wolves. So what we're going to see is that the wolves are going to come out and they're going to disrupt the, the uh, formation. And so we'll have some of the heavy infantry coming one by one. Meanwhile, they're getting peppered down with these guys. And what I'm hoping is that they, they, uh, they're going to hit this line and then they're going to spread out into a line here. And then while, while they're going in a line like that, my, uh, my demons in the back will flank around. And that's the plan. Um, I'm not exactly sure if, if this is the way that I, I should do it. In all honesty, what I should be having is that I should be having my, my archers up way farther. Uh, and that will be more likely to to make these guys spread out. And it, Because these guys are going to be walking you know one line per combat turn. And that's pretty average. Uh, so, so more than likely we're going to get... These guys are going to end up way up ahead and probably get hurt a little bit. Um, he, right now we've got skeletal body. I'm going to make him do one casting of fireflies. And I figure by the time that those, that, that should be, it, it takes a turn for him to, to prep the spell one turn to, to fire it off. Um, because it's a hundred time, hundred percent casting speed. So that'll give him four turns to reach me before he starts trying to charge them or get close enough to fire on them. The other problem that I have is with these guys back here. And uh, they can't they can't immediately fire, so these guys will be probably moving forward anyways just to fire on the enemy. So a couple mistakes right away from scripting. Um, I, but in all honesty, this this is a trash group. We don't care about these guys. We care about the Dione. 
they they probably will not expand more than maybe one i might get this one i might get another one after that but i'm not really relying too much anything that this expansion party gets is, is kind of bonus um saramashio got the got the the mercs uh, and, and the Black Fist would have been really nice too, but I don't have money. I, I'm not going to have money for the rest of the game. In fact, I'm kind of worried at this point that I'm going to have enough money to buy my second Dione. It, it's going to be close. Uh, so let's look at that. Um, let's see. Save and quit. Move on to uh, Featherfall turn three. So my... My partner is very good at expanding. When I when I first played with him in the first game, he was the only person who out expanded me. And I I, I love practicing expanding. I, I've been playing single player games since I was you know since I was probably two or three years old, and I'm into my I'm well into my thirties at this point. So it's it's kind of a strange thing for me to go to multiplayer games, and as a result. When I get into these games and I have a single player portion that I can practice and practice and practice, I will practice the single player portion, and that's what ends up happening is is that I got I I feel like I'm pretty strong at expansion, but my my partner is actually probably better. So let's let's look and see what he did, and I'm not going to say that he's perfect on this. I did look at one of these battles before, and I, I think that there was a place that he could have um done better, but I mean, it's just little scripting, and a lot of times you know or that you could do better just because. I can see what he had, like what the enemy has. So this is actually pretty dangerous because these heavy cavalry, they have a light lance, and this, uh, what what'll end up happening is that the first attack will give an additional five damage based on speed. It can it can be up to five damage, but I think it's normally like five damage, something like that. And not only that, but it's piercing damage. In piercing damage, oh, I wish they did the tooltip for this. Piercing damage, I think, reduces your your armor by 25%. So if we look at his little Lamore, uh, he's got 18 protection, and that brings it down to about 16 or 15. So he's already down to 15 protection, and then um, that's going to be... So it's, it's going to be minus 2, so he's going to have to roll better than, than the little Lamore. Because you, what you do is you both roll 2d6... And it's, if you get a 6, you get to roll that 6 again until you stop getting 6s. Um, and and he, the, the Heavy Cavalry needs to beat the Linamore by 2. But he gets this extra Strength bonus, so he's going to be dealing a lot of extra damage. Now, the goal is to absorb that first Lance hit, and then after that, they, they, don't, get that, uh, they don't get the Charge bonus for First Strike anymore. At least I don't think they do. I think you only get it once. So what we're going to do is we're going to see these guys charging forward, and they're going to hit the Slinomore. Well, the thing is, is that they're not. They're going to hit the Scout instead. And that's kind of what he was going. He, was, he, he looked for a heavy province that he could sacrifice his Scout in order to get ahead and to get an extra hard, um, to get a hard province right away out of the way. Now... You're sacrificing vision, and we're not going to be able to see things because of it. So let's uh, let's watch this, and you're seeing the cavalry come in, and we've got a problem because they went through the they 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 ignored the scout and went after the Namor. Now the thing is, is that um, these guys have taken poison damage, and if you look down here, the green bar shows you how much they've taken. And he's already taken one point, and that means that because the way that it works is it, it, it separates all the poison damage you took over 10 turns. He's probably already going to die eventually from hit point or from the poison. Even if he goes and kills our, our little disciple here, he's still gonna die from the poison. So I guess we still get the province. Uh, but let's let's start seeing how much damage. And if you see Sometimes they're actually dealing damage by by rolling higher than than uh, his protection, um, and like that sixteen was an exploding die. That means he rolled sixes and then rolled again and again and again. But if you see that the poison took effect so quickly that he was able to to kill the heavy cab before the heavy cavalry killed him. Now the scary thing about this was that sixteen points of damage because his uh, max hit points is one hundred sixty five. 
16 divided by 165 is about 10% of his hit points. That means he has a 10% chance of getting an affliction. That was a very, very worrisome hit because it could have caused an affliction. I didn't know. Oh, man, that's not good. He spreads death. Um, and, and as a result, we got pretty lucky with this. Uh, the rest of the battle is just now that those big guys are gone. Oh, man, we got a couple more exploding. Or I've noticed it's these guys are getting hit by the Linamore, I hope. Um, but you see, like, we're getting a lot of chip damage here, and we're, we're kind of lucky. Even though it's only a 1% chance, we're getting a little lucky that we're not getting any afflictions here. And all that happened because of a very simple scripting error. And I don't know if it was an error or if it just, uh, cause like this guy's base is kind of big. I think that if he would have put this guy here, it would have been a little bit better, maybe, or maybe put him back here because I think that the heavy cav are on attack rear, maybe. But the thing is you don't, like you can only know that, you know, coming into combat and seeing where the heavy cav are going to be. Because they could have been down here, they could have been up here. It was all a risk, and I and I don't think he played it wrong. Um, it's just, it, it you can always do better. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the next combat. Um, so this should be a safer combat. He's got javeliners, which are uh, they they throw giant javelins. Uh, but their protection is only thirteen. So they're going to be taking a bunch of damage, especially if they get surrounded by these guys. What he's hoping is that he, uh, he's going to hope that these guys come here and get bottled up and then he will come in from the side and he'll flank them. And then they'll just roll up the flank. Let's see. Let me delete this real quick. Ah! <laughs> okay. Let's do the pointer instead and maybe that'll work better. Okay, so he does get his bless off, which is for his uh, Nephil Giant right here. And you can see right here, his Javeliners, they, they didn't hit the Javelin line, and instead they've gotten two lines. Now these guys are going to flank around the side, and this guy's now at, in danger of getting hit, because he's getting hit by four different people. But now his Javeliners have, have formed up the line, and we should be safe. Now two guys are going to hit that one guy, and two guys are going to hit that one guy, and we should go without any losses. So that did work out very well. The script was perfect, and everything went as planned. Let's see how our battle went. Um, as you can see, I did uh, change up the script, I guess. So I did do this episode before, and I think I was playing with it. I saved and exited. So what I ended up doing was having a block down in this uh, this side, and what I was hoping for these guys to do was I was hoping that um, these guys would come up like this um, and then uh, the demons would come off to the side like this. And I think that it goes wrong or maybe it doesn't. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Um, let's, let's see how it goes. Okay, so we have a problem because... The cavalry have, have, uh, these guys, the, the first guy went so fast that the cavalry went to him, um, because it was set to attack rear, I think. And so it, 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 it bounced up on him. And then these guys set on attack closest now are attacking the demons rather than my big stack up front. I think that had I, had I positioned the archers forward more that they probably would have gone after the archers, but even then the, the cavalry kind of um, ended up, yeah, putting a, a kink in things. Now, if you see, my, my guy is actually going on a, a weird little trounce through the rear lines, even though he's set to fire. So um, I, I, I believe that this actually ends up saving me, <laughs> believe it or not. My demons end up running. Um, and at this point, I'm not very worried because um, if you see these guys, like 1v1, my archers win, I'm pretty sure. We'll find out. Yeah, my, they're gonna they're chopping them down at this point. And not only that, but my dude in the back has caused his leaders to run. So we we did win this, um, just because there weren't enough troops. If there were more troops, we probably would have been in deep trouble. Now, one of the interesting that's hap or interesting things that happened was that turmoil plus luck ended up um ended up hitting first turn, where we pulled a a national commander. 
Now, this is one of the reasons why Turmoil plus Luck, in my opinion, is one of the strongest combos in the game. It builds on itself. Not only do you get good events, you get lots of good events. And I think that you could possibly argue that Order plus um, Order plus Misfortune could work together too because you get fewer events. And uh, But I don't know if the Order, uh, taking Order is worth taking Misfortune. Whereas taking Luck for, for Turmoil, you get... Like I as a as a as Yomi, you get free spawn based on your turmoil. So I'm getting something for the turmoil, and I'm getting something for the luck, and I come out at uh, zero points and my pretender. So it's it's, it's worth uh, like the 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 turmoil is a negative thing, luck is a, a positive thing. So they come out at point even. So. Um, I lost all my little demons. They, a lot of them ended up coming back home, which was just fine. Maybe I can take them out in another expansion party. The downside is, is that they cause, or that they cause unrest. So I might be starting to see Yomi getting a little unrest, but it won't be for a little while now. Um, I'm going to take these guys up to dry fields and we can see my script real quick, which is the script I should have done from the beginning, which these guys firing, um, right away at the, at the bad guys this guy will buff himself up and then move forward i'm leaving him in the back because even though he was kind of a boss last time he did end up getting a never healing wound which knocked off six of his hp um i do want him safe i don't care if these guys die if he dies like it's a mage just bare minimum it's a mage uh, i i could be getting seven research per turn from him even if he does nothing else he also summons onis He's valuable just for staying alive. So I am going to try out this province. I mean, it says there's 10 guys in it. It's a, it's a wasteland, and wastelands normally have really crappy guys anyway, so I'm just going to risk it. Um, again, I'm I'm working on my Oni, uh, or Dione, and he'll be coming out next turn, and hopefully we'll get the uh, air random. I really like my air randoms, and I really need them. Now, another thing about the luck turmoil boost is that I'm getting a free mage. Now, I told you that Misfortune in Order might be better, but you're not going to get your National Heroes. And we're playing with, uh, I think it's like Better Heroes or, or Heroes Enhanced or something. It's, it's the Heroes mod that everybody has. And you, you don't get a chance after these guys unless you take Luck. Um, or or I, think, I think Misfortune 1 doesn't even have any chance of getting one of these guys. So it's really just not worth it. And I get a free Blood Hunter or a Blood... Uh, uh, a like he can make um dousing rods for my partner and with that we're starting to think that maybe i should be the crafter because i've got all these different abilities to make these research items and i can make him dousing rods and he can just start making a beeline towards or down uh the blood tree i'm also getting 20 research per turn which is huge i mean it's half of what my pretender so it's half a pretender right there and as it goes right now i'm going to be getting alt uh, two next turn if I didn't have him, I still would have made it, but if I wouldn't have uh, researched with my initial mage, I, I wouldn't have gotten alt 2. Like, my, my pretender alone wouldn't have gotten me to alt 2. So, we're getting alt 2 just as I need it. Um, Just so you know, uh, I push F1 at the end of my turn, and I look at the defense right here, and if it says 0, then I know that I've screwed up or that it's a siege. So make sure that you do it, get into a habit of it, especially if you are a new player. Um, there's a couple hotkeys that are very awesome on this. Um, I guess if you want to know escape, you can get out of here. Um, D lets you know, okay, hey, I just took this over and it only gives me commanders. If you're looking for what indies you've taken, if you haven't checked recently or you're you're looking, I, I know that I have a Jade Amazon somewhere, I forget where. Uh, you can you can push D to, to figure it out. You can also I don't know if you can actually build from here. Um, no, you can't. Um, but it, it gives you uh, it gives you also the sites and where you've searched. Another one that's important is uh, Tab. And what's really cool about him here is that you can actually um, let, let's say that I, I want to build a a uh, black steel helmet, and I can say ah this these guys have got earth. So I come over here, I left click on there, I forge. Uh, an item and I can just go and forge the, the the item that I want or let's say that I want to alchemize something I can alchemize it right here you can do all all of your your standard uh, the only thing you can't do is movement uh, you can also equip if you right click their name you can equip uh, with gems and stuff like that so if you're trying to equip like a large number of, of, of troops 
then you can um, actually do it from here. And what's cool is that then you can see right here if you're missing any guys like, oh, this guy doesn't have earth gems. And when you're equipping 20 guys and you're having a look at the big old thing on the left, it kind of gets annoying, whereas the, the little spreadsheet style is, is much better in my opinion. So, choo 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 choo. And uh, just so you know, if, like one of the things I've talked to some experienced players, I said, why don't you, why don't you do disciples? And one of the things is, is that they, veteran players get really frustrated that people don't put PD into their provinces, and so they lose provinces to random events. Uh, that that there's just no excuse for it, guys. There's no excuse. You, it takes you two seconds to put F1 and check. You put a little sticky note on your on your monitor, something to that extent. You just you've gotta you've gotta make sure that you put PD into your provinces. Um, okay, so we're 20 minutes in. I think we've got time for one more turn. So let's go to uh, Featherfall, turn four. So my buddy, like a boss, once again has expanded twice where I've only expanded once. Um, that, that'll end next turn. Well, maybe. I don't know. Depends on how, how this battle goes. So let's see how the battle went. Did things go as planned? So once again, my little uh, doggy is going forward, and he's going to try and break up their formation. We're hoping that what's going to happen is, is that they're going to hit them, and then, uh, yep, and if you see, now they're kind of strung out because they hit that, that uh, because they hit the, the wolf. And so, I don't know if it's exactly because of that, but that's the general idea, is that you're trying to break up the formation. You can do this too if you have a small group of, of units, um, and what you can do is like, let's say I got a giant line, and then I can put like, maybe a double line of like six guys, and that way when the enemy comes forward with their line, uh, this part right here will stop to fight and then these guys will go forward and it will create a salient in their line so their line will look something like this and then you're able to come around and come in the flanks and actually start dealing some serious damage. Now you'll also get flanked later but it's, it's a start. It, it's something that um, especially against giants where you have to flank them otherwise you will never kill them. It, it's a very good idea. Um, so let's go over how combat works real quick. So when this guy comes up to my to my archers, he's going to he's going to attack my archers. He's going to have an attack skill of eight, and he's going to deal thirteen damage in his piercing damage. So we're going to take off a little bit of protection. So remember, attack skill of eight and thirteen damage. These guys have a defense of ten. So when I roll my 2d6 and you roll your 2d6, or the, the militia rolls his 2d6, the militia needs to win by 2, otherwise he just he doesn't even hit. Now, the way you can bring this defense skill down, there's a bunch of different ways, and we'll go over that when we get into super combatants and thugs, because it happens a lot that your defense skill gets knocked down. But for now, we're going to say it's a 2d6 roll. So let's say that he's now hit... He, he 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 rolled two higher than me and now we're going to go into his damage now this protection here counts as a shield every time that i get hit so if two of those guys hit i'm going to minus 12 from each of their damage or if you want to look at it this way they're going to add 13 to their roll and i'm going to add 12 but remember it's piercing so i only get to add 10. So I add 10 to my roll, they add 13 to their roll. And on average, they should be dealing three more damage than what I do. And so they should be they should take they should deal three damage to my hit points. Now if there's two guys, each roll I get to add 10. I don't get to add 10 once. I that protection is every single attack, which is why protection in my opinion is the strongest defense skill. Defense or is the, the strongest tank skill, sorry. Um, defense is just, it's not reliable. It's nice, and on things like elves, and there are exceptions, defense skill kind of, there's ways of get, getting around it. Whereas protection, you always have it. Um, so, three guys on average should be able to kill this bandit, or about four guys. So we don't want four attacks on our bandit, because on average, I think like, I don't know, I don't want to say half of them, but it's probably less than half. But uh, just just know that we don't want too many guys attacking this guy because 
if three of them actually get through this defense skill, this guy is on average going to die. Now my guy in return is going to deal 15 damage. Now when it's slashing pierce, that means it rolls a it rolls a 1d2 and it says like which one did it actually take. We're just going to for for sake of simplicity, we're going to look at the 15 damage with an attack skill of 10. So this guy has a defense skill of 11, so he gets a plus 1 when I roll my 2d6 and he rolls his 2d6, he gets a plus 1 to his. And so I'm going to be less likely to hit him, but not as badly as what he's going to have with me. Now my 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 attack does 15 damage, and it's I'm going to get plus 15 and he's going to get plus 5. On average, I should deal 10 points of damage. We should wreck these guys. It takes three of them to kill us, and it takes one of us to kill them. So let's see if that's actually what happens. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Sorry. I get a little bit bored. Now, if you see, my guys are actually... They're, they're, the, the archers are attacking the archers in the back, and they've done a little bit of damage. There were more archers to start with. In addition, they might, they might plonk these... Uh, the the commanders which would be very nice in fact i think he did yeah they 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 got a hit on the commander which is kind of nice but there's three commanders it it's not likely to happen um i should have seen if i could have had these guys fire closest because that probably would have been better oh my he took 11 what he took oh i bet i bet the guy died i bet there were three here so let's see how this works so they're hitting my line and immediately these three guys kill a guy and deal six damage to one dude and six damage to the other let me just tell you guys that's or i'm sorry oh oh no he, he actually okay it was it was eight damage or i don't know it was a bunch of damage to the guy who died and then it was six damage to this dude that is not average that is not normal in addition we we killed one of their guys so we kind of came out behind in that small little attack so um, I'm not going to go over each individual point, but if you see, I, t I lost another guy there. Um, and at this point, these three guys are going to come up. And because there's three of them, it's easier for them to hit, and they just they, they turn this guy to a bloody mist. Um, and what has happened is what can kind of happen in Dominions. Yeah, they just, they just did 21 points of damage to that dude. I'm just getting terribly unlucky with this. And I'm putting, I, I'm kind of looking at this one in a micro spec because I've seen this battle before, and this is not what should have happened. Mal Militia should never deal that much damage to, um, to, 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 to these guys right here. It's, it's just, it should have been a one-sided fight, and instead it was a one-sided fight. Now, luckily, my Onishugo comes through, and then he starts, uh, wait, wait for it, wait for it. He starts casting Resist Cold because he's, he's cold. Um... I got lucky, and they got lucky. They got lucky first, and the second one is they, they routed, and that's the only reason I won was because they luckily routed. We'll go over the route when my Dione come out. Um, just go over the fear mechanics along with morale. So let's look at my buddy's uh, attacks real quick, and then we'll finish up for the turn. Again, he's got the Linamore. Um, this this is going to ma get massacred. It, it looks really scary, but remember, these guys have got no protection, They've got very few hit points, and they don't deal a lot of damage. Now, remember, we still got hammered by these guys through a bunch of bad luck, and I guess it could happen to this dude, but if you look at this green mist around him, as they surround him, they will start taking poison damage. And watch this. Green numbers. And then, once again, green numbers. All right, maybe? Oh, come on. Don't, don't make me into a liar. There we go. There's the green numbers. Um, sorry, I, I watch this a little bit faster normally, I'm kind of slowing it down. But if you see, they're they're still chipping away at him, and they they've done damage to this monstrous beast, uh, even though he has 18 protection. And I I really can't tell you why, other than there's a whole lot of them, and you're just gonna get that RNG. Oh, they've got a, I take it back, they've got heavy infantry. Um, and it's still only 13 piercing damage. Um, on average, they should not be dealing a whole lot of damage, but they, they seem to be like still getting through. Now, the nice thing for us, we didn't get any afflictions, so we're still set. Um, but you can see that you can have good luck, you can have bad luck, and it just it all evens out in the end, um, where if you put all of their good luck and you put all of your bad luck side by side, it's about even. Okay, so 
Again, he sticks with the same formation against this, hoping that um, it'll work again. The problem is the heavy infantry are up top. And these guys, instead of engaging the heavy or the infantry like last time, um, the, the, the heavy infantry go right by his main line and instead hit the, the, uh, the javeliners. In addition, we've got a whole bunch of guys back here limping away. And because of this, these limps and these cripples, um, they don't keep a steady line. Now, this is just, he's keeping this guy in back so he can make sure he keeps a bless. Um, because this guy can't self-bless. He needs somebody to cast bless on him. So, this guy right here takes a, a capital turn's worth of recruitment in order to recruit. Even though this guy is a crappy guy, he's valuable because we cannot recruit many of him. So he's keeping this guy in back just to be safe, if only just because we can't get a whole lot of him. Um, so this guy's, th these guys are going to get munched. But in return, if you see what's happening in his backfield, he's, he's having three guys hit his, his giants. And even though they're dying slowly, they're still dying. Um, a better, and, and this is again, this hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, a better option would have been to either do a hold and attack. Uh, if we if we watch it again, he might have done. Actually, no, he did a hold attack. Um, a better option would have been if he was, and again, like I say, like this is, there's no way he could have known what the formation would have been. Would be having the the javeliners here have these guys here. Um, because that way you would have seen, uh, they, they would have done the same exact thing, which is hit that line, and then the melee guy set them to attack closest, and they would have came off the flank, just like what happened in the first battle. Instead, we have, uh, instead we have these guys hitting the javelineers, and these guys coming in the back and hitting the guys that are not dangerous. Because at the end of the day, um... The, these these little slingers only deal eight damage, uh, and eight damage is not going to do anything to to these giants. Uh, even if they hit them in the head, this blunt damage is extra damage to the head. Even if they get hit in the head, it's not going to matter. So um, there, that's uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't. I, I, I was watching this, and I don't know how he took. Um, because he's got he's got one two three four five provinces. So last turn he actually took another province, and I didn't see how. Um, I guess I could talk to him about it. But there are some glitches in the game where it kind of doesn't tell you exactly how, um, where you're not allowed to see, or you're not able to see, or it doesn't come up when your uh, partner does his attacks. Um, so for next turn, uh, Taka Takashi, like I said, he he's important by himself. His troops are all dead. I'm going to go pick up the, the two guys that ran away um, because the barbarians are not <laughs> – that's scary. These guys will be the last guys we kill at this point. Um, the heavy infantry, he's not going to be able to solo that either. So he's – he and he can't um, – it's a river, so he, he's going to have to slow walk at home. Um, I may try to put a fort here if I have the money, um, but I, I, did, I did get good income this turn, so I am going to have enough to uh, – Wait, did I not make a Dione? Oh my goodness, you know what? I think I screwed up and forgot to make a Dione. Now, this is a very, 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 very stupid move. Please don't ever do this. Um, you need to remember to make your Dione. Uh, I, I can't even believe it. Did, do Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, guys. That's what ended up happening. This turn I downloaded wrong, so what you're seeing is actually the playout that I did. At least I hope so. I hope I didn't forget to make a Dione because that would have been stupid. Um, and instead, I think I end up moving into this deer tribe. Um, I hope if I did move into these elephants, which I've done before because I've been in a hurry and I didn't see the war elephants, the war elephants will probably kill me. Um, I do need to take this out eventually anyways, but what I'll probably do is like put a bunch of these guys out in front and, and have them die. Now, if you see another thing is I, I picked up one of these uh, Amano Jaku. And these guys are are blessable, so they can take my regen bless. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have him sit next to my commander, and when they attack me, um, the, it, it, it's going to form a line. 
So, uh, other than that, research, we're still doing, we're trying to get to Alt 3 to get to Iron Skin. Um, we'll probably go from there, probably to Conjuration to get uh, some in Earth Power, and then probably move on to Construction to get some of my research items down the way. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that uh, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one, um, and have a good one.